If you've spent any time browsing social media feeds over the past few months, you've probably encountered tons of screenshots of people sharing their conversations with a powerful AI chatbot called ChatGPT. New artificial intelligence. A new online chatbot. ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Called ChatGPT. It's not only gone viral on social media, but also caused havoc in almost every profession because of its potential to, quote, take your job. And in just the first five days of its public beta release, this freely available online tool crossed 1 million users. And if you haven't used it yet, you may be asking why. Why is this so popular? Well, as Elon Musk puts it, one of the founders of OpenAI, ChatGPT is scary good. And the ways in which you can use it can help almost anyone in their daily lives one way or another. Because of how it's been trained, it can be used for writing essays or poems or stories, or to provide customer service, compose music. And as many of us watching this video have or probably will use it, even debug computer code, make games from basically scratch and websites and basically whatever else. And who's behind it all? OpenAI, the AI research and deployment company founded in 2015 by world-class research engineers and scientists in a group of the biggest names in Silicon Valley. Elon Musk, I'm sure you know all about him, Peter Thiel, co-founder of PayPal, Reid Hoffman, co-founder of LinkedIn, and Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, to name a few. Them and a few others pledged $1 billion to develop a nonprofit AI research company, which they describe as a mission to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity by building safe and beneficial AGI, or again, artificial general intelligence. And now, at the beginning of 2023, has a nonprofit and for profit sector raising funds at a $29 billion valuation and projecting to generate $1 billion in revenue in 2024. All of this being helped by OpenAI's existing products like Dolly 2, ChatGPT, Whisper, and Codex, and of course, their API. Let's talk about ChatGPT. How does it work? Well, what better way than asking ChatGPT itself? How does ChatGPT work? And there you have it. Now, I'm not going to read all of that to you, but what I can read is if I ask it to explain it to me like I'm five in just three sentences. So according to ChatGPT, it itself works like this. We taught a computer how to talk like people by showing it lots of stories and conversations in a big book. Now we can answer your questions and have a conversation with you like magic box. It's not perfect like people, but still does its best to understand and respond to you. Sometimes, depending on the question, you may need to tweak your request a little in order for the program to understand or even be more specific, similar to what we had just done. Like asking it to explain to me like I'm five and for me to be concise in only three sentences. And it'll know what you're referring to as each new chat, it will refer to previous questions asked. It's constantly learning even within a simple dialogue. You see, the dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests like, how can I cheat with ChatGPT? Or how to break into someone's house. OpenAI trained this model using reinforcement learning from human feedback, also known as RLHF, which is actually harder to say, <laughs> using the same methods as its sibling model, InstructGPT, but with slight differences in the data collection setup. They trained an initial model using supervised fine tuning. Human AI trainers provided conversations in which they played both sides, the user and an AI assistant. They gave the trainers access to model written suggestions to help them compose their responses and mix this new dialogue data set with the instruct GPT data set, which they transformed into a dialogue format. And they continued on creating a reward model for reinforcement learning, collecting comparison data, and more, performing several iterations of this process. The benefit of using the same methods as instruct GPT is to avoid generating outputs that are untruthful, toxic, or reflect harmful sentiments and produce fewer imitative falsehoods than GPT-3 itself, the language models they're powered by. But even with all this data and training and work that's been put in, ChatGPT still has some limitations that the creators are well aware of and actually working to fix. Like how ChatGPT sometimes writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers, or how it guesses what it thinks you meant instead of asking follow-up questions, which I actually don't mind. I, 
I feel like it would be kind of aggravating to have it ask a bunch of follow-up questions before it ever gives you an answer. But the question still remains. Why is everyone so obsessed with ChatGPT? Well, it's because it's disrupting every industry, from education to creative endeavors, from IT to human services, with everyone writing about how it'll take our jobs, kill entire businesses, and help students cheat. I mean, just look at the actions being taken. The New York City's Department of Education blocked access to the tool for anyone on its network. The International Conference on Machine Learning announced this policy stating, papers that include text generated from a large-scale language model, such as ChatGPT, are prohibited. And Stack Overflow, the world's largest coding form, banned users from submitting responses created with ChatGPT. But that's the least of our worries. It also turns out that ChatGPT can create malware from scratch. Now everyone really is gonna be a script kitty. <laughs> Great. A leading cyber threat intelligence organization, Checkpoint Research, ran an experiment to see if ChatGPT can turn regular text into malware or phishing campaigns. That research experiment concluded that, that it can, that less skilled criminals can learn to become cyber attackers. But to be fair, they also said that these AI capabilities can be used to defend systems as well. It can do bad, but it can also do good. That is why everyone's so obsessed with ChatGPT. Because it's good. So good that it had a billion dollar company quaking in its boots. It has people scared of what this means for their jobs, students, children. What it will create in the future. What it will destroy. It's the age old story of something that was made for good but can be used for evil. That is ChatGPT. And whether it truly is something to be feared or even something we'll use on a regular basis in the future, only time will tell. So let's let it. And until next time, y'all have a good one.